Good evening YouTube, welcome to this video. So, as you can see in the title, this video is going to be about my entire story of why I moved to Italy and why I am finally going to be moving back in September. The This has been a very difficult decision. I, I'm happy, but I'm also sad at the same time with this decision. But I know in my heart that this is the right thing to do. But in this video, I will explain about where did this idea come from? Why did I decide to take this opportunity? I will also talk about the process of this because the process is very interesting. Because at the time when I decided to move here, um, coronavirus didn't exist. And then a month or two later, it then existed. And then, as we know now, as we now know that... Um, there were lots of lockdowns and mandates and restrictions and stuff which interfered with my original move here and um and my process after covid19 and about the struggles and the 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 the, the good things and the bad things that come with traveling and moving to another country um so i'm going to start right from the beginning so in my last job in England, I used to do engineering and manufacturing. I used to work for a Japanese and American company. Um, at the time, I was about five years into the company. And uh, this woman who was Italian uh, started to work for the company. She moved uh, from Roma uh, and uh, lived in Woking. I think she still lives there now, but I don't have any contact with her anymore. And we had we struck up a friendship, and I met her and her husband and her daughter, and um, we used to have a really good uh, friendship together. And one of the things is that at that point, before meeting her, I had never been to Italy before, I never been to Rome before, I never had any intentions at all in visiting Italy, or Rome for that matter. Um, but when I was a boy. Um, I used to learn about the Roman Empire and about uh, Julius Caesar and all these wonderful things about the Roman culture and the Roman history. But you know, when I was uh, when I was in my thirties, I didn't think about visiting Rome. And um, at the time, she said to me, "Well, why don't I visit Rome in um, in February two thousand and nineteen?" I remember it so well. She said, "Why don't you visit Rome?" And I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, sounds like a good idea." So I did. I went in uh, to I went to Rome in early March as a tourist for the first time, and I enjoyed it. Actually, it was a, it was a great experience, but I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to do. If you haven't been to Rome before, um, I will explain a little bit more about the tourism stuff uh, probably near the end of this video, or maybe in a separate video, because um, there are things to take into consideration when you are a tourist. And a lot of things have changed since after COVID-19. And as it's summer right now, it's not the best of times to travel to Rome because the tourism season is, is at its peak right now. And also the weather can be unbearably hot as it has been uh, in July. Um, so anyway, so I go to Rome in early March and I had a great time for one week and uh, then I had to go back to work. Then two weeks later, my father died in hospital. He was my father was already in ill health at the time, and uh, this was down to um, uh, uh, not cirrhosis, um, sepsis, sepsis, um, and other organ failures because he drank too much alcohol, and the alcohol in the end killed him. Um, I was uh, when. Uh, we were fortunate enough, my family and I were fortunate enough to see his last moments in hospital before he died. And it was a very, very horrible um, ending. But when my father was alive, we never spoke about me moving to Rome. I had no idea myself at the time I was going to move to Rome. Um, now, my Italian friend, uh, she knew my father had died. And the very, very next day, and this went on for three weeks, by the way, continuously, every single day. Um, she gave me an incredible amount of abuse after my father died. 
and um, it, it was a horrible way for me to grieve. I couldn't grieve properly. Uh, this woman, um, she got upset with me uh, because I revealed to her husband that she was having an affair with another man behind uh, her husband's back. And he went mad, of course. And, um, of course, my punishment was that um, she would happily give me three, week, three weeks of abuse uh, uh, straight after my father died. And um, I did something to her which, I'll, which I regret to this day. I retaliated in the bar, in the pub, and I threw a pint of beer in the face. And it was just my frustration and my anger that came out of me. And I'm, I'm embarrassed and ashamed I did it. That was at the heat of the moment. And um, that was the end of that friendship. And uh, she left the company. Actually, she got sacked from the company because she was stealing stuff and she was making other people's lives hell um, in a workplace. So she lost her job. And um, it was kind of like a sigh of relief for me. Um, but it was a horrible time. Anyway... After a couple of months, uh, we get a letter from um, uh, about an inheritance package that my father left us, which we didn't have any idea about. So um, it was a nice amount of money as well. So my sisters decided to go shopping with their money. My mum paid off some of the, uh, the bills and she went on holiday, I think. And as for me, I, I paid off my credit cards and my loans. Um, so I was debt free. Uh, I went to the shops and there wasn't really anything I wanted in the shops. So I bought myself uh, free things. I bought uh, this computer that I'm using now, this uh, this laptop. I bought some Apple AirPods, uh, second generation, which still works today. But the battery, I need, I need a new set of AirPods because the battery life is running out. And I bought a, um, I bought a watch also. The watch is very special to me because it's in memory of my father, because he loved his watches when he was alive. And um, I was thinking that uh, this would be good for me to wear and show off around the place. It's nothing exciting. It's a, it's a G-Shock watch, but it's a nice G-Shock watch. And um, it cost a pretty penny, but I don't care about the cost. I care about it. I care about my father. So the inheritance comes in. And um, after my shopping, I'm thinking, like, what do I do with this money? And I'm thinking my father would want me to do something memorable with it. Now, again, this is before COVID-19. I had no idea that were, there were going to be cancellations and things at this time. This was probably July, I think, in 2019, that... Um, I, I remembered that the Euro 2020 tournament was uh, due the following year. And um, I decided to purchase a hospitality ticket for the opening ceremony, the first match of the tournament, which was actually here in Rome at the uh, Stadio Olimpico. And I was going to watch uh, Italy play Turkey uh, here in Rome. I was going to get a hotel. And, and how the... Uh, hospitality ticket works is that um, it cost me 1,750 euro for it and how it works is uh, I go to the stadium uh, three hours before the match maybe they give you a tour I'm not, I'm not too sure about that maybe you meet the players again I'm not too sure about that um, I would have been there for the opening ceremony and of course for the football match itself and I would have been there for 90 minutes after the match had finished. And although it cost me a lot of money, this would have been the perfect way for me to remember my father. Um, and then after that, I decided to purchase a 10-day holiday to Rome. And that 10-day holiday was in early September 2019, straight after the summer holidays had finished. And I have to tell you... Um, when I came here on the very first day, the weather was amazing. It was a really, really nice weather. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It was just perfect. And I did the whole tourism thing this time, the whole touristy stuff. So I went to the Colosseum. 
I went to the Imperial Roman Forum, which I absolutely love that place, um, and the Colosseum as well. I went to the Vatican. I, it's weird. I haven't been to the Vatican, the Vatican Museum yet. After all this time, even after four years, I still haven't been into the Vatican Museum. Um, I, I went to the Trevi Fountain. I went to uh, this place called Cerco Massimo. And uh, I have recently uploaded videos from my old channel onto this channel here of uh, some of my things that I did in Rome. This was actually during the coronavirus situation and also with, uh, with uh, lockdowns and things that were in place at that time. Um, so please check those out because they're really, really interesting, especially um, Alone in Rome. That one is incredible and I'm so grateful that I was able to capture and record Rome without any tourism at that time. But you will hear me shiver and uh, because it was freezing cold um, that time of morning. But it was, a, it was lovely though. It was a really, really nice opportunity to, uh, to witness and to film and to document. Um, so anyway, I did the 10 days in Rome and then I had to go back to England uh, because my, my time in Rome had finished. I enjoyed Rome so much that I didn't actually want to go back to England. I, I wanted to stay in Rome because that holiday had changed my mind and my, my perspectives on life that my routine in England is just work, 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 work. And, I mean, I did have some holiday time as well, um, but I didn't really travel that much during my holiday time. So I, I stayed mostly at home with my family and um, occasionally I would go to London or, or go somewhere else for the day. Um, anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, so I arrived back in England and then I see my family uh, say, hi, everyone, I'm back from Rome. And um, uh, and then I decided then to go to the pub. And it was um, the weather was just exactly the same as it was in Rome. It was a wonderful evening. Um, it was still light and it was still warm. And um, <clears throat> I ordered a drink and I went outside uh, the front of the pub and I was looking around my hometown. My hometown is in Woking in Surrey. And I'm looking around the area and I'm thinking like, why do I live in this place for? You know, nothing ever changes over here. It's difficult enough to get an apartment or flat or a small house in Woking. I'm sure this is a similar story for lots of people. And it's virtually impossible in Woking because you have to be... Um, uh, you have to tick the right boxes to um, uh, to move to uh, to get a house or a flat. Um, there's a lot of political correctness in in Woking in a Woking council. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm looking around Woking. I'm thinking like, what am I doing in this place? You know, I've just had a nice holiday, and then next week I've got to work with uh, the same people again and do the same thing. Uh, I'm thinking there must be there must be other ways in life to enjoy myself, and um, I hadn't spent all of my father's uh, inheritance money at that time, and I don't know why, but at the very same time when I'm looking around, I'm thinking about Rome, and I'm thinking like if I can't get an apartment here in, in Woking or in England, maybe I'll try Rome instead, and. After that thinking, I then realised that I could get a new job. I could make, I can make new friends. I could have a brand new life, and it was so exciting. It really, really was an exciting moment. Um, and I thought to myself, like, do I really go with this crazy decision and move to another country, or do I stay here in England and continue to do what I'm doing? and not really progress anywhere. And at the time, again, this is before COVID-19, um, I decided to take this opportunity because opportunities like this don't come often. And this may be the only opportunity I might ever get in my whole life. So I decided to take it. I love risks. I love taking risks. I love risk taking. And this was, it wasn't just a risk. It was also to see could I make something out of this move? Like, could I could I actually survive in another country? 
I was aware of the bureaucracy in Italy. I will talk about the bureaucracy later. I was, uh, I was, I'm a, I was very aware of the weather and the climate and the language and the, the people. Um, there were lots of things I was aware of and lots of things, even to this day, that I'm still not aware of. Um, so I then decided to move to Rome about two weeks later. And I remember telling my mother for the first time that, Mum, I'm going to be moving to Italy, uh, to Rome in Italy. And my mum, she was a bit surprised I said that. Um, in fact, very surprised I said that. Um, and she said, are you sure you want to do this? I said, yes, I do. I said, you only get one chance and I may never get this opportunity ever again. I said, I want to try it. I want to see what it's like to live in another country. And uh, she said, well, okay, if that's what you want to do. So, okay, I did. Um, now, the process of this. So, okay, I'll tell my mum that I'm going to be moving to Rome. And I've got a time and a date set up already, which is uh, March the 27th, uh, 2020. That was the day I was supposed to move to Rome. I'll, again, I'll go into that later on. Uh, so I do the research and I, I look to see what I need to do, what documents I need uh, to move to Italy. And uh, the first thing that came up was uh, you need this thing called a Codice Fiscale. A Codice Fiscale is an Italian tax code. And without that, you cannot have anything at all. Like, I mean, you can't, you can't rent out an apartment. You can't rent out or buy uh, a house. You can't get a bank account. You can't uh, open a, a mobile phone contract. You can't do really anything. You can't get a job even without a codice fiscale. And um, so this was the, thir the first thing that I applied for. And I applied for this in, I think it was about the beginning of October. And um, I then did other research on other things. Uh, the other thing I did, of course, was uh, to study Italian. Now, I never studied Italian at that time as an independent uh, learner. And I made several mistakes, uh, which uh, I think a lot of people who are learning a language for the first time make similar mistakes. And I went on to Google and um, I, I typed in something like, uh, what's the best way to learn the Italian language? And uh, applications like um, Duolingo came up. Uh, Duolingo actually was the first one that I downloaded and which I used. And Duolingo is okay, but it's not the best. It doesn't go through the grammar and vocabulary stuff properly. It doesn't go through the grammar tenses that you need to know about. So basically you learn the vocabulary of any language and the process is the same. And also I, I, I've got lots of books and I know you can't see, but I've got lots of books where I'm looking at now. Uh, I've got lots of uh, CDs and DVDs and CD-ROMs and PDF files. I've got lots of things of learning Italian. And uh, I spent a lot of money online as well. And um, uh, now I've stopped learning. Italian naturally because as I'm moving back to England I'm not bothering to learn Italian anymore um, so in November around about the middle of November 2019 I get that email I've been waiting for which is about my codice fiscale they've created it for me and uh, they sent me the PDF through email and um, and then I printed it out I still have some hard copies of it today and um, that is like my golden ticket to move to Italy. So if you ever decide to move to Italy, uh, whatever you do, apply for the Codice Fiscale first. That is the most important document you, that you will need. I've got Pam Bear here who's just joined me. Pam Bear is here. <laughs> He's a beautiful little cat. Who's this Pam Bear? Who's this? It's you. Mm, and me. Mm. I love you, Pamela. Okay, so, um, so the process of moving to Italy was starting to take shape. I've got one important document done. Um, I did some stuff after the new year because I didn't expect there to be a lockdown, and things were going all right. And then uh, COVID hit China, 
Now, at the time when COVID hit China, I didn't really think about there being any problems because I know China have had lots of viruses in the past. And as far as I'm concerned, that they've they've sorted out these problems with the viruses in the past, um, apart from COVID-19, of course. Um, again, as it happened, in I think it was in December, and on the news, they were saying people falling ill and uh, things like that. And I, I just thought it was just like a standard um, winter bug that was going around. I didn't think about it being a virus at that time. I thought they went a bit over the top of saying it's a virus. But now uh, we, we all know the facts of what happened afterwards. Um, so for now, this is the process of what happened uh, to me here in Italy. I will then um, I will then talk about more of what happened in 2020 because the stuff that happened in 2020 is fascinating. It's very interesting and uh, even to this day, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget everything that I had to go through to survive over here. And the 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 the, the, the happiness and the sadness and the the sad the, the frustration and the anger also that um has come along with this journey so um without further ado i will come back to you in about in in a moment <laughs> i need to edit this uh, video so i'll edit this video and then um we're going to the stuff that happened in 2020 okay i'll see you in a minute hello welcome back so we're now into 2020, and we, as we know, 2020 was for everybody, or for most people, a very, very bad and horrible year, for, even for myself. And this is very interesting and very, very relevant into my story of when I moved to Rome and why I decided to move to Rome during the pandemic. So, um, so we're in January. Uh, 2020. Uh, at the time, Brexit had just gone through, and um, I, I went to the Italian embassy. Um, it actually it was actually the last day of the year. I actually booked an appointment to go there, and um, because I tried to message them, I didn't know what the uh, what the rules were about with Brexit at the time, and uh, they said that everything should be okay um, if you register as an immigrant. Um, uh, so I did. Uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, they gave me all the information, but they said there was nothing to worry about. I apologise in advance for the noise behind outside. These are kids. They've been a bit noisy today, but I can't do anything about that. And I need the windows open because it's been very, very hot. Uh, it's been a very hot summer so far. So, um, so the embassy is sorted out. I'm then looking for bigger things in for my life, my new life in Italy. Uh, so I was looking uh, at the time for an apartment. I found a small apartment in an area uh, called uh, Garbatella. Garbatella is a district in Rome. It's um, and it's very, it's a, like a very young sort of trendy um, uh, area where lots of young people uh, uh, meet up and. Uh, the usual stuff. It's a nice uh, community. So I thought at the time that um, because I was accepted uh, for this uh, sort of shoebox apartment, but it was uh, cheap and um, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, so I had a, an apartment sorted out. I paid for the deposit and I paid for um, the extra fees. I used a website called spotterhome.com which if you move to another country in Europe, you can uh, you can look for an apartment uh, or a property that you can live in uh, for however long you need to stay there for. And it's very, it's very, very good. By the way, if you do, if you are looking into moving to another country and you, you use Spotter Home, um, one of the rules I would say is, um, is when you are looking, you can actually in the filters part, you can um, you can select what you're looking for. So, for example, you might want a flat with a balcony, or you might want a, a house with a garage, or, or something like that. Um, also, as it comes with uh, deductions and bills, 
uh, you usually have four of the utilities. So you've got um, the internet, uh, water, gas, and um, something else. I can't remember what the other thing is. And um, if you select those, uh, all bills are included. So this is also very, very crucial. So um, it's always good to look for the bills that are included into whichever property that you desire. So I did that, and um, at the time I felt everything was good. Um, and then in February, I um, I was originally going to go to um, Rome on a business trip, in which I did. Um, I had a job secured, or which I thought was secured at the time in Italy, in Rome. It was to do engineering and manufacturing, and um, I passed the interview stage, and I, um, everything seemed really good at that time. And the the process of me moving to Italy was going so smoothly. Now, of course, when things go smoothly and and uh, things are going too perfect, there's always something that's going to go wrong at the end. And for me, this was totally true. So, I I go to Italy. Um, at the time, and Italy was get, was uh, starting to become the worst infected country in the world. There were lots of deaths at that time, and um, I, it still didn't put me off in going to Rome because I knew what I wanted. And uh, the virus wasn't really scaring me at all. It didn't really. It didn't. I, I wasn't really concerned about COVID nineteen at the time. I came to Rome. Um, I would say maybe about two weeks before the first lockdown started in, in the northern part of Italy and then the whole of Italy the next day. Uh, so I come to Rome. It's more of a business trip than a holiday because I wanted to, at the time I wanted to pay the deposit for my new apartment. Um, I also wanted to see this new job of where I was going to go to. And I took a whole load of uh, CVs and uh, I was looking for work in bars, restaurants and hotels, not knowing in like two weeks time that um, all of those industries were going to be closed uh, for a couple of months. Um, so anyway, my my time is up in Rome and um, uh, what I'm trying to do is... Um, the company knew I was in Rome in my last job, and uh, because I the the cases were still getting bad to worse in Italy, uh, my boss wanted me to contact him, in which I did, and um, the the rules were that I had to go into quarantine for two weeks, and I did the quarantine in for two weeks. Um, I remember the time when the northern part of Italy was going into lockdown. And um, I'm there. Actually, it was in, I was in the pub at the time. And I remember the northern part of Italy was in lockdown. And I'm thinking, don't be the whole of Italy. Please don't be the whole of Italy. And then the next day, the whole of Italy goes into lockdown for three weeks. At that time, I thought, if anything, I'm going to be late uh, in Italy by just maybe by one week. I didn't think the lockdowns were going to be as long as they were. Uh, I, I think it was the same for everybody. I don't think people thought about the consequences of the uh, lockdowns at that time. Um, so I do the I do my two weeks in quarantine. My boss contacts me on the first day of the second week, and he says, "How am I doing?" I said, "I'm fine. I don't have any symptoms. I've been living my normal life as always." And um, my my super my manager said, "Great." come in next week because the next week was supposed to be my last week with the company and uh, you can do your work and then you're free to go to Italy. So I'm thinking, great, this is exactly what I want. Then the worst part was, which I, I'm still angry with today and I, I still can't believe it actually happened. The My boss rings me up the next day and he says, John, don't come into work. We're going to have to let you go. And I was puzzled by this because um, what happened was um, the manager t told the staff, the women who I used to work with, that I was coming back uh, to work the following week. 
and to the women because the way that uh, covid was announced on the internet the tv the radio and things like that uh, the women were very scared they were very concerned that i was going to pass on a virus and kill everybody which wasn't true uh, they didn't speak to me they didn't talk to me at all they were under the assumption that because i've been to italy that i must be killing everybody it was the most ridiculous claim but um, it got worse because from what I heard, um, the, the area manager works in the same building because uh, it's also the headquarters of Europe. And he's a bit of a, um, he is a bit of the, um, how do I say in the nicest way? Um, he got the wrong idea also of COVID-19. I am angry with their decision. They, they went, they pretty much had a protest basically on the first day and on the Friday because I was due to come back the following week to finish off my work. And because I've been to Italy, they were thinking, oh my God, he's going to kill people. And, um, and it wasn't true. So the, the company, it was so bad that they had to get the, uh, the managing director down in the end. And uh, the, yeah, the area manager agreed with the women. And the area manager didn't talk to me about this. And I'll never forget it. It was a horrible, horrible experience in a workplace at that time. My former supervisor, though, um, he was the only one who tried so hard for me to go back to the company. Um the company wouldn't listen to him uh which is a bad thing because he uh, basically what uh, he's he's very good in his job and um you have to say the right things to him to be on the right side of him uh otherwise you might end up with a horse's head next to your bed <laughs> next to your pillow if you say the wrong thing to him but they did say the wrong thing to him um, I don't know what they said to him, but uh, they, they, he was really, really angry with the company for that. And I'm still angry also with the company for that. I could have taken legal action for unfair dismissal, but I decided not to because I was looking at the bigger picture in, in case if things fail over in Italy and I need a job again, um, I might need this company in the future. And... Um, I'll speak more about my job uh, for the future later on uh, because there, there is re relevance in this. So the company let, lets me go. I'm absolutely devastated, but I'm still optimistic in moving to Italy at, at this time. So um, while I was on quarantine, while I was in uh, quarantine, I got all my stuff sorted out. I had a lot more free time to do things. And um, I, I, I kind of sensed that a lockdown was due in our country. Uh, but it was, um, again, there wasn't really much information at the time. And then I had about one week left. Now, the relevance of my job is that my last day was supposed to be the 20th of March, 2020. And even if I did leave the company at that time, um, uh, the, the bars, the pubs, the restaurants, the cinema, all the hospitality sector had to be forced were forced to close. So even if I did leave the company, you know, without being without losing my job, I still wasn't allowed to go and celebrate uh, with everybody. It was a horrible experience that. And then it just got worse after that. Um, when Boris denounced the, lo the lockdown, um, I was only four days away, four days away from moving from England to Broma to start my new and exciting life. And it sucked. It, it was like a dagger in my heart. And then Italy announced a further three-week lockdown and um, I had to admit defeat. Um uh, so I had to cancel everything that I worked hard for. I had to cancel my apartment. Uh, the job I thought at the time was secure. They they let me, um, they terminated my contract because of COVID-19. And the whole thing was a disaster without even being there uh, to start my new life. Um, everything I had to cancel. 
and it was um, it was so surreal, and um, a lot of things started to go wrong after that. So um, one of the things I remember also was with uh, the Euro two thousand and twenty tournament that was postponed. I got my money back for that, so that wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted to go to the match and game anyway, but I couldn't do it because no, no one knew what was going on at the time properly. Um, and and just everything collapsed very quickly, extremely quickly, and it was so difficult for me to process everything, and. Um, I actually broke down. I don't normally break down, but as everything happened all at once and so quickly, I actually broke down because it was too much for me to process. And, um, you know, this new opportunity, this new exciting life had just vanished, uh, you know, in front of my eyes. And uh, not just for me, but for everyone. But for me, when you move to another, or when you plan to move to another country, this is supposed to be a really, really good thing. But um, but it was a it was a horrible experience. Anyway, so lockdown has happened, and um, I've had to cancel everything I had worked hard for to move to Italy. And um, uh, but I still was adamant in moving to Italy. I I still felt that I must do this. Even if there's a pandemic, I must do this opportunity. I must grab this opportunity. Um, and it was um, so June comes. The uh, the lockdowns have been lifted, but there were still some restrictions. And um, I'm thinking that I must move to Rome. I must do this. Um, and I did. I took it. It was, it was a huge risk at the time. It was a very, very big risk because anything could have happened. Um, and things did happen over here in the end. In, um, and, but I wasn't going to be, t- I was going, I wasn't going to let the politicians tell me how to live my life. I wasn't going to let any health, um, expert or doctor or nurse tell me again of what I must and mustn't do. I wanted this opportunity so badly and I took it and again it was a big risk and um, luckily I had an apartment sorted out um, uh, uh, in the centre of Rome. If you've been to Rome before, um, I I used to live extremely close to the Pantheon, like about a minute's walk away from the Pantheon Um, and uh, very close to Piazza Navona, which is one of the main uh, um, uh, piazzas and square in, in Rome, it's a beautiful place and um, anyway so I, got, I, I go to Rome and I go to my new apartment and it's really really excited, I'm really excited um, and I then start my new life so people say that in life the steps of success uh, the first step is uh, usually the hardest but actually, the hardest step was actually the second step. Because the first step is just buying a plane ticket and going on the plane. Anyone can do that. The second step, though, is actually settling down in the country and getting used to this new life and uh, to do things that you've never done before and to talk to people who you've never met and to try and build a solid life. And it was challenging. It was really, really challenging at that time. Um, and the restrictions started to come in a lot more after the summer holidays. We had to wear face masks outside for a long time, and then there was a curfew between uh, 10 p.m. Uh, to 5 a.m. Uh, every day. And actually, the the the, um, the curfew actually saved me a lot of money because the bars. Uh, one of the things that fascinated me about Rome, uh, actually not just Rome, but Italy as a whole, is um, they had like a traffic light system, which at the time, yellow uh, yellow was uh, bars can open, restaurants can open up until 6pm. Uh, orange um, 
museums can open i think i think it was like that but uh, bars and restaurants can't open i think it was something like that uh, and uh, the red is um uh, like a like a lockdown for two weeks and um the thing with rome was that most of the time um uh rome was in the yellow most of the time and that was the opportunity for people to go to bars and restaurants and to have like a normal life um up until 6 p.m um and uh it was an it was an interesting experience because a lot of bars and restaurants were closed mostly around the world at that time and i remember in england uh, there was like the tier one tier two tier three tier four system uh thanks to that um uh, thanks to matt hancock at the time you know the one who cheated on his wife um uh so um uh so I'm living in this apartment. I've got no job. I then eventually get a job uh, teaching English. And this is actually interesting because I got no teaching. Ex- I had no teaching experience before living here. Uh, um, and um, teaching English is very common here in Rome. And um, I tried to do... Um, uh, I did do some work online, and I still do work online today. I, I worked for numerous companies before, um, and a lot of things had changed. Um, so I got a job interview to go to this uh, school in uh, a place called Cornelia, which is around about the western part of Rome. Um, and the um, the boss and her father, they it's both a joint uh, school they were both uh, happy with my uh, th- they were happy with the fact that I was native English um, they were happy to give me a try um, in in Rome uh, in this school and it was really exciting and eventually I, I started to work for this uh, for the school and um, and it was ju- it was just a great fun experience and then things got better and better and better and um, uh now i worked at that school for almost four years uh i have actually left now because i've got pan bear here um i uh i've actually left the school now because the school's closed but also my boss or former boss is a new mother and uh i think for her dealing with new family life and work life was very difficult for um for her to balance out, including her uh, husband. So, um, Pambe. Sorry. So, um, they, they give me a try out and, um, I like this. I like the school, the students like me as well. And, um, it, it's been great fun. Um, but work wasn't so good during COVID-19. It was very, very difficult because of the, uh, the restrictions and mandates, there were occasional lockdowns at that time, and um, it met, that made things even difficult. Um, but I've learned a lot from uh, COVID-19. So, um, one important thing, actually there were a few important things before the end of 2020 that were pretty much the nicest way to say goodbye to 2020, because it had been a horrible year for everybody including myself although for me it was a good and bad time um so i because of covid19 i i decided to take a uh, course into uh, teaching english to be qualified and i didn't really know that pe- that many people at that time and the weather was it was sort of bad in the winter periods as you would expect and also there was a mini lockdown also so I had nothing else to do, and I had Christmas alone, so I decided to go on a computer to do my course. And because of the knowledge I had from the school, I was able to pass my test uh, and uh, pass my and get my qualifications very quickly. Um, so that was a great way to say goodbye to the new year, uh, uh, goodbye to, to 2020. But the cherry on the cake was... Um, uh, because of Brexit and the transition period at that time, 
uh, all governments around Europe were saying to English people that if you want to live here and uh, um, live under the Article 50 Treaty of the European Union, which means that you don't need a visa to work or to study or to uh, to uh, to live in in any European country, you need to apply for residency. And I had previously I tried to apply for residency numerous times, but uh, because the communication is very poor in this country, um, I found out some of the mistakes that uh, they they didn't openly tell me about. So I got those corrected. And it was about three days before the end of 2020 that um, I get an email from a municipio and they are processing my residency application. Now, with the processing part is uh, when you apply for residency in Italy, um, when the municipio or the local authorities are processing your residency application, that is the date on paper for them where you officially arrived in that country or city. And uh, for me, it was the biggest sigh of relief ever. So um, I am lucky enough to live here without a without needing a visa. I have the same rights as uh, when uh, the United Kingdom was part of the uh, European Union. And uh, it saved a lot of time and a lot of hassle. So I'm really, really happy with that. And um, that... Um, it, it saves me uh, going through the horrible and nasty bureaucracy in this country. So, 2020 was a very busy year. Um, it was a very, very tough year. I'll never forget it. Um, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to do part three. And the rest of the part three is going to be through the rest of my time here in Rome and to give reasons of why I've decided to leave. So stand by and I'll see you in a moment. If you're still on this video, watching this video, thank you so much. I know this is a very long video, but I did say it was going to be a long video. So we've gone through 2020 and I'm going to talk about the rest of the uh, three years um, that I've been here, or actually four years that I've lived here. So um, uh, 2021 was pretty much the same as 2020, and um, it, things started to get a bit better in Italy for me. I've been starting to make new friends and to um, uh, enjoy my life slightly. But, uh, of course, the mandates and restrictions were still very difficult during that time. And I never really had the opportunity to travel that much, um, even if it looked like I did with the videos that I've uploaded onto this channel. Uh, I haven't done as much as I would like to have done in terms of travelling. Uh, so, as time has gone by, I've been, um, I've been extremely lucky. Um, I'm a legal resident over here. I got this thing called the Carta di Sojourno. This is a very important. This is um, a Carta di Sojourno is uh, basically what you're doing is you're asking the police and the Italian government if you can work or to study in Italy um, legally. Um, the police did this. They issued me the card in the police station. And um, and that's it. I'm a legal resident over here, and I have every right legally to uh, live and work here, and to even study here, and to try and enjoy my life as much as possible. So after COVID, so in around about the about the end of about the middle of 2022, um, things were not so good um, around the beginning of 2022 because of the mandates and restrictions. They were very, very strict over here. Um, they had a COVID passport system and um, everything you needed to have a vaccination uh, to go to certain places. And it was, uh, it was a disaster at the time. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't actually available at the time for foreigners uh, at the beginning, but then eventually it did. Um, and um, I, as I used to live in a city centre, I now live in a suburb, which is very close to the centre. 
and actually this area is very quiet and it's a nice area actually um lovely people i remember my first time when i came here um <laughs> that um no one really speaks english around this area and my Italian is still terrible. Even today, my Italian is still terrible. I have improved a little bit, but as soon as someone goes, blah, 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 I'm like, oh, mm, 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 mm. Um, so it is difficult sometimes for me to understand. Um, but it's still, it's still all right. It's, it's okay. So this community is a nice community. I've learned and met, um, I've learned lots of things about this community. I've made lots of uh, friends around this community. It's a really nice community. The only problem is, is the language barrier because a lot of people's English isn't that good um, and my Italian is terrible. So I don't, um, the language barrier is a huge, huge problem. Um, I've tried as much as I can to study Italian and to memorize it. Um, Italian is much harder to study than English, in my opinion. Um, but again, it takes practice. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of studying and lots of practice. Um, so things work-wise are going okay. They're not perfect, but they're okay. Um, my social life is kind of okay, but again, I don't travel that much. I haven't had the opportunity to travel that much at all in the past four years. And um, I'm just feeling like I'm at a loss right now. This is a great country. It really is a good country, but there's lots of problems over here, like bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is the, is the hardest part in this country that I feel in my opinion for me like i've lived here for four years and i'm still not allowed an italian bank account despite the fact i have a codice fiscale as i mentioned in the beginning of this video i still need an italian identity card and um getting an appointment for the italian identity card is a challenge in itself and um <laughs> i also then need to have medical health care here and that's another step after getting the um, Italian identity card. And it's just so much messing about. And I've got no time for messing about. Um, so there's lots of things I, I can't have over here. And it doesn't help me because I can't have a normal life as I would like to have over here. And uh, there's this thing called a CAF. You see these things. Uh, a CAF is an area where you get where there's an expert who is um, is legally allowed to help you with applications and paperwork. You have to pay a fee for whatever the paperwork is, and uh, they stamp it, and uh, it's all government approved. And um, one of the guys here in this area, I, I mentioned um, the, the things that I need with him. And uh, he kind of said that, oh, this is fake news. You know, you're, you're lying. And I'm not lying at all. I need these things. And, um, uh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you don't speak to people like that. You, you don't say that oh, it's fake news, uh, news you, you know, you're lying. You don't say that to people. Uh, you help people. At least that's what I would do anyway. But anyway, um, uh, so there's so many obstacles to face in this country. It's a great country, but there are lots of problems. The transport also in Italy, the public transportation system is terrible. And if you are a tourist who is thinking about visiting Rome, um, my advice is to get a hotel somewhere in the centre of Rome. Yes, you might have to pay a little bit more, but if you go in the suburbs or somewhere outside of Rome, um, you could, the transport might not be that good. And also, just so you are aware, um, there are lots of strikes that tend to happen quite a lot on public transport. And usually, unlike in the UK, they give you two weeks notice. In Italy, they give you about one or two days notice and it can be frustrating. Um, so be careful of that. 
So what have I learned about this experience here? So I've learned a lot about myself. I live here by myself and um, uh, it's challenging. The whole thing is challenging and much harder than I thought it was going to be at the beginning or even before even moving here. Um, there's lots of things that I'm not happy with, like the loneliness part, because of the language barrier. It's harder for me. It's harder for me to interact with people and to support and to speak to people. Um, I do have English speaking friends here as well, which is which is fine. I I love them so much, but the language barrier is a huge huge problem, and the loneliness that comes with it. Um, like Christmas, Christmas is the worst time of year. So I've been there for full, Christmas four times and I've been on my own four times. And when you see other families go to other families and friends, it, it kills you. It, kill, it really does kill you inside. And um, I mean, through the years I've been better organized. So I, I try to keep myself busy and occupied as much as possible with things. And, um, but it's never fun on your own. But this year I can finally be with my family for Christmas. So I kind of forgot what Christmas is like, actually. Um, other things I've learned is about myself. Now, as I live here on my own, I've had to I've had to do everything on my own, and a lot of things are achievable. But in Italy, I think things are kind of impossible in many ways. Um, I've learned. A lot, a lot about family life as well. Uh, family life is very important to me, and I, I've learnt, you know, about family life, about doing more with my family. So when I go back to England, I'll be with my family and um, with my mum and my sisters, and um, I can sort of rebuild my life again. And you now I've got lots of amazing stories to talk about. The work in Italy, so I used to work at an English learning school. The school is now closed uh, permanently. I work on a website called italki to teach English. And um, I'm working uh, there from now up until about the 10th of September um, because I'm going to be leaving Italy on the 13th of September. And I want to have um, the last few days to sort of see people before I leave. Um, so that would be good. Um, so why am I leaving? There are lots of things that have been going through my mind recently. And um, around the last week of June this year, I was um, I had to go to hospital for an emergency appointment. And this came out of the blue. Um, the reason was that um, before I was drinking too much alcohol and um, it, it sort of damaged my liver a little bit. So I have cirrhosis. Um, I've certainly stopped drinking alcohol now and um, I'm, I'm drinking lots of water. I'm drinking uh, green tea, actually. I've been doing green tea quite recently, actually. And this idea is to sort of detox the body a little bit and my liver. So um, I'm feeling really good actually now. Um, other things is um, this was a health scare. And this was the final straw that made me decide to go back home to England. Um, I have a lot of stress and anxiety living here because it is very difficult to live in this country. My routine of work is virtually work, 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 and no, virtually no time to enjoy myself. This isn't. No one should be living a life like this. Again, I miss my family. Now, in my going back to my previous job in England, now I lost my job because of COVID nineteen and the way that the company treated me. Now, my former supervisor, he was the only one who supported me at that time when I needed it. And he's he's now the boss of the company. And he's always promised me that whenever I go back to England um, and I need a job, he, he will give me my job back on a permanent contract. And I believe him 100 percent. 
because he he's great. We we had our we had our differences when we used to work with each other. I think now that um, he's matured a lot more, and I respect him very much for this. And even even when I lost my job with the company, I respect him more so because he was the only one who tried to protect me at the time when I needed protection from other people, and he was the only one. I don't know why he chose to do that, but I appreciate it. And uh, when I do give, when I do go back to my old job, it, finally, it's a guaranteed salary. It's a contracted job. I can get weekends off. I can enjoy my life a lot more again. And um, I'm really, really excited about that. Um, I also will not feel lonely anymore when I'm back in England. And um, <laughs> one of the things that I won't miss is this very, very hot weather in this Mediterranean climate. Uh, so um, there are some good things out of it. But I'm also very sad because I, I have spent a long time over here I, in Italy. I've tried to make this work for myself and um, I wouldn't say I failed because I, I have given it a try. I'm surprised I'm still here actually after four years of, uh, of working very hard and battling my way through the coronavirus with the war in Ukraine. Um, I have some stories about the war in Ukraine and they're, they're unbelievable, but they are believable because I know, because I was there at the time. Um, uh, just briefly, um, on the eve, I didn't know about it at the time, but on the eve of this invasion, I had a regular, I had a repeat student from Kiev um, who wanted a lesson with me, who needed my help urgently uh, for her to be to relocate to Cyprus for a for her job uh, because her job in um, I didn't know at the time, but um, her job in Ukraine was going to close because of this um, this invasion that Putin um, started. Anyway, I helped her with the immigration paperwork and did as much as I could. And um, and then afterwards, the next day, I remember the first attacks in Kyiv, in, in Ukraine. And she came into my mind immediately and I messaged her to see if she was okay. And it turned out that, um, thanks to my help, that uh, they uh, not only her but her family actually were able to leave um, Kiev literally hours before this invasion started, and I found this very difficult to talk about. Actually, at the beginning, I I'm okay talking about it now. Um, she thanked me in in the best way to say she she thanked me and. Um, um, it was a wonderful moment, but it was also a touching moment, and and you know that I helped her family out to to safety, without knowing full well about this war, because the news at the time was just COVID, COVID, COVID. There was nothing that I was aware of about an invasion or a possible invasion between Russia and Ukraine. So anyway, that's done. Another story from Ukraine that I had was, um, again, before this invasion started, I had a 10-year-old boy who was trying to improve his English for school. And um, after the invasion, about two weeks after the invasion was going on, I remember clearly hearing one of the air raid sirens going off in the background. And, of course, the boy was screaming and panicking. The family were... Oh God! It was a, it was a horrible, and terrifying situation. I I don't know what happened to the family. Even to this day, uh, I have no idea what happened to the family. They haven't been online for over two years, and um, I hope that they're safe. But um, I I really don't know. I would love to know. I think I would like to know what would happen. What happened? I hope they're safe. I hope they're relocated. But uh, this is a part of the part of this stress that I've had with teaching English. 
Um, and similarly in Israel, um, I've heard a couple of the sirens go off over there with some of my students. I get students all over the world and um, I hear everything. I hear everything. And again, like with Ukraine, there's the world isn't the same as it used to be. The world is getting more dangerous and it just saddens me really. Oh, that noise is uh, sprinklers um, in the garden. I can't change, I can't do anything about that. Um, so the stress also builds up and up and up. And um, there's so many things, there's so many reasons why I, I want to go back to England. But I feel in many ways that Italy has sort of ruined me on a financial basis, on a mentality basis. And I miss my country. I love my country. I miss my country. And I'm looking forward to going back to my country to have my normal life back again. And it's going to take me some time to properly settle down and to get used to this new government and this, uh, the, these, these new things that have happened. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll feel a lot more happier when I touch down at Heathrow Airport and, uh, and give my mum and my sisters a nice cuddle and to then rebuild my life again. I mean, I have enjoyed it over here in Italy, um, but it's, again, the stress has been absolutely horrendous and I, I need change. Unfortunately, I can't move back to England now. It's August now, thankfully. Yes. Um, and I will be leaving and Italy and returning back to England on uh, <laughs> of all days, Friday the 13th, uh, September the 13th. And I can't wait to go home. If I didn't have Pam Bear the kitten, I would be going home now. But um, I can't. So this is my story. This is my story. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, story. Um, I told you it was a long one. I don't normally do video blogs this long. But um, I, I, I love talking about this story and uh, the achievements I've achieved and the stuff I've learned. Would I come back to live in Italy again? No. But as a tourist, I would love to be a tourist. Um, but I might have, I might move to another country in the future. I'm thinking more of America. I, I like the Americans, um, but I, I, at the moment, I don't know what to do. I just want to rebuild my life again and to get back to pre-COVID times without any of the stress and drama and to um and just to just enjoy my with everything i have my family my health my job and and um maybe even a family for myself but we'll see what happens in the future anyway if you've made it this far thank you very much i won't keep you guys any longer so i hope you enjoyed this video uh, please give this video a thumbs up uh, please give, please subscribe to this video, and uh, please share this video. You know, please let share this experience with other people. It's been a unique experience over here, um, but for me personally, um, for me, Italy, it's like I've been there, done that, got the t-shirts, and um, I'm ready to go home. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, have a wonderful evening or wonderful day, depending what time you're watching this video. And uh, again, thank you for watching. Have a, have a great time and um, again, share the love. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.